Do acoustics like this matter? Yes, they do. And let me tell you why. Acoustics is a heavy subject. There are university degrees in acoustics. They produce acousticians. And these are scientists who design the spaces such as your houses, your offices, train stations, concert halls, music clubs, shops, pretty much all the spaces that we move about in. And the thing is that acoustics, good acoustics, can improve your experience in these spaces. Bad acoustics can ruin it. Now in this video, we're not going to dive deep into a subject of acoustics. Rather, we'll talk about general themes and how you can use them and approach them when you think about podcasting, especially uh, using a bedroom at your house. When we talk about your personal space, your home studio, aka your bedroom, there are two ways to talk about acoustics. One is isolation and two is the room treatment. First, isolation. Isolating your room means cutting it out from outside noise and also minimizing the spill to outside. So we're talking about your neighbors not disturbing you and you not disturbing your neighbors. Isolation will matter the most when you're recording your podcast. And then we're talking about room acoustics and room acoustics are about the treatment of the sound of your room and correcting any issues that come with the space and that could be early reflections, standing modes or bass build-ups. Room acoustics are important when we are talking about mixing and post-production but they also play a role when we record a podcast. Let's start with recording your show, recording some audio. Isolation. Ideally, you want to isolate your space, your room, so that the outside noise does not spill onto your recording. Also, working in a quiet space will get you in that zone. For majority of people, majority of us working on podcasts, we focus on minimizing the outside noise coming in rather than worrying about inside noise going out. The tonal noise, that is your birds, people speaking over you, planes passing by, it's very difficult to clean that up. And when you're using the tools to clean the tonal noise, you will change how the original audio, the voice, sounds. Sometimes it's even, you know, impossible to clean it up completely. That's why on movies, for example, there is a lot of re-records that happen later re-records of the dialogue and that the process is called the ADR. So the director initially, of course, they want to use as much of the original recording that happened on location as possible. Now that's not always possible. So then, months after they wrapped filming, the original actors are asked to go back into the studio and recreate these dialogues to do the ADR. On some movies, <laughs> the re-recorded dialogue can be like 60% of all, all the dialogue. Yeah, background noise is no joke. <laughs> Isolating your room, well, it's not easy. Also, it depends on the situation, like you live in a flat, you live in a terrace house, you live in a noisy area near the airport or something. It can be done, but it's hard. You can, of course, use DIY solutions like duvets and some pillows, but just think about it. How can you work with the space you got? And then moving on to the second bit of the video, the treatment of your room. And that means adjusting and correcting the issues of the space that you're working in. You don't want to work in an empty small room, even an empty large room. You speak in a big hall or a church or like empty classroom and you got this reflections going, they are really difficult to clean up if they're on the original recording. Nearly impossible. So we want to avoid that and to do so we are treating the early reflection points of the room. Going to be some build-ups as well, especially if you're working in a, from a small bedroom. We'll talk about them in, in a second, but treating these reflections 
so the room is not reverberant it will be important. I think most important, really. You want to deaden the room as much as possible. When you are recording, you will capture the sound on the room. Minimizing it, stay close to your microphone, try to isolate the room and deaden it as much as possible. The rest can be treated with uh, EQ in post-production. Let's move on to mixing. So you've recorded your show, now you want to mix it. When it comes to mixing, the obvious solution is working on headphones and you should first do that. I always say investing in good quality headphones is kind of a must if you want to do a good job on your show or maybe if you're producing podcasts for other people then ideally you also use some sort of sound correction software like Sound ID that will try to neutralize the sound correction of your headphones because every pair of every headphones will sound a little bit different. That comes with a lot of issues as well. Programs like Sound ID will EQ it so it's the sound that you're hearing is as neutral as possible. You can also buy headphones and send it so they come up with a personalized profile of your headphones. However, within the software itself, at least Sound ID, they have a lot of profiles already. I do use these averages on a daily basis. So far we got isolating the room, treated some of it, reflections, putting stuff in place so it's not just a bare room. You're speaking close to the microphone and you're using headphones uh, then to listen to your show. Ideally, you're working in quiet environment. Audio kind of demands it. Anything other than that will affect your work. So that's the basics. That's what you should think about before recording your show, during recording, and then when you're processing. The fun starts when you start mixing on speakers studio monitors. These are the professional speakers that are in studios, like the ones behind me. The speakers are only a part of the equation. The room will be and is as if not more important than the speakers. The room will color the sound of the speakers, your studio monitors. It will affect how you perceive that sound. Now, it doesn't matter how expensive these studio monitors are. If there are issues in your room, these issues will compromise these speakers. Right, so what is the solution? Learn about acoustic a bit so you understand what's happening. Then you can go either via DIY route. So you build few panels, you treat these early reflections and so on. Or you use services, professional services like GIK Acoustics. They offer you free advice and then you can buy the products from them. That's what I done. You are looking at bass traps, because rooms like this one, which is a spare bedroom, will have a lot of bass in them. So you've got to treat that. You are treating early reflections. So I got panels on both sides of the walls as well as on the ceiling to treat the reflections between the speaker and myself, you know, the desk reflections. It would be good if you know the issues of your room. Now to do so, you will have to get something like this and it's a, a measurement microphone. So it's a special microphone that measures the sound of the room and then gives you the curve, frequency response of that room. You can use paid software like Sound ID from Sonarworks that I've used. There's some free software as well. I think it's called Room Wizard. Both of them will show you the issues of your room. With software like sound ID from Sonarworks, what it does, it then creates a profile of your room that corrects the issues happening in that space. And what you do, you place that software then on the output of your computer. So even when you're listening to the music, the sound's corrected. And of course, on the output, the master track of your audio sequencer, of your DAW. So what you're listening is essentially the neutral sound of the room. Unfortunately, when you're working in a room such as this one, which is a room that was not designed for audio work, it was converted, there's always going to be issues. You can treat the room, put some acoustic tiles all around you like I did. You can then use Sound ID to neutralize 
whatever there's left over. But essentially, there's always be a little bit of issues. So learning the room, learning your speakers, learning your headphones, just getting comfortable in your working space is also as important. Why we do all of that, right? So you might ask yourself, well, I've recorded, there's no noise, why do I have to care about that? The answer is translation. Everything that we do, especially in the post, the mixing, the mastering, the whole editing thing, thing, is to make it that your podcast, your mix, sounds good everywhere. Not just in this room, on nice speakers or on your nice headphones. You want it sound good when someone's listening in a car, when they're listening on the cheap speakers, when they're listening on cheap headphones, when they're listening at the gym, when they're listening in the kitchen. You always want it to sound as good as possible. By isolating your room and making sure the sound is as neutral as possible, you are on a the way there. Half the process is already done. The rest is, of course, your skills and how much time you spend and so on, your knowledge and your improvement over time. But essentially, that's what we're looking at, the translation. So, for example, this room has a lot of bass buildups. And so there is a low frequency bass buildup. Then it goes like that. There is a cut around, uh, I think, 200 hertz or something. And there's another buildup again. I've got bass traps in each of the corners and there's like one on top of the other. So eight bass traps in total. And there's one monster bass trap on the back wall and that's behind the camera. And there's still bass buildup. So if I didn't use sound ID correction software and listen to the mix on the speakers, I could then think, oh man, this mix is so bassy, like there's so much low end, I better cut it out. I'll cut it out so it sounds good in here. And then I listen somewhere else and it's just thin. There's no bass. I've cut it all out because of listening in that room when there was too much bass. On top of the acoustics, that program allows me to hear that, to see that, so I can make sure, okay, well, I'm gonna leave a little bit of that bass in so it translates to other environments. Acoustics matter. You know, they do matter when you work in audio, when you do podcasts, and they matter in our everyday lives, like in all spaces that we visit. Don't get discouraged. When you start, just learn the basics. You know, isolation, a little bit of treatment, these LED reflection points, deadening the room, that will get you started. With time, as you learn more, as you develop your skills, you start noticing and then you'll start improving your room as well. Yeah, I think that's it. I'm done and I'll see you later. <laughs>